Question 5 from Section 2 of the 2018 Higher Physics Examination. Hubble's law states that the universe is expanding. The expanding universe is one piece of evidence that supports the Big Bang Theory. And the question is, state one other piece of evidence that supports the Big Bang Theory. Now, all you have to do is just write down that what that piece of evidence is of the Big Bang Theory. And in your physics study, you'll have four of these things, which I'll reveal to you in a moment. But remember, in exam, you just have to write down one of them. So, what is the Big Bang Theory anyway? The Big Bang Theory is stemmed from the fact that we have detected that the universe is expanding. Uh, every other galaxy seems to be moving away from us. And if we run the clock backwards, then those galaxies would be coming back the way towards us and eventually would come to a point where it would all begin. This Big Bang Theory, where it all started, where the, the inflation of the universe started a way, way back in time. So what we're looking for is evidence to show that the universe or the space between it is expanding. So I'm going to go with the four of them with you at the moment and give you an explanation to them. But in the exam, that question says state one other piece of evidence that supports the Big Bang Theory, which means you just have to write down one piece of evidence and no more, not even explain it. But for the sake of our study, I'll do that for you at the moment. OK, the first piece of evidence was obviously from the redshift of the spectral lines. Light sources in the lab gave specific lines, uh, which were absorption lines. Uh, and what we found out when we looked at a similar source from a distant star, from a distant galaxy, those absorption lines were moved over towards the long wavelength part of the spectrum. The spectral lines of the light from the galaxies have shifted to long wavelength parts of the spectrum. And this is very similar to the Doppler effect. If a car is moving away from you, then you're going to get this kind of situation. You're going to get a car approaching you e -ah, as it moves away from you. You get a low pitch as it moves away from you. Therefore, what we're seeing here is like the Doppler effect. And the Doppler effect tells us that when the object's moving away from you, the wavelength from it is going to be stretched out. Therefore, those spectral lines will appear to be at the long wavelength part. So, redshift of spectral lines was what the big uh, evidence was that the universe was expanding. And it was Hubble who discovered this way back in the early 1900s. So what are the other pieces of information which would back that up, that the universe is expanding and therefore at one point it must have came from a much smaller existence? Well, the second part is from the cosmic background radiation. Now the radiation emitted at the time of the Big Bang was immensely hot. But if the universe is expanding, then that radiation will be cooled down. And when the radiation is cooled down, the wavelength it emits will become stretched out. And it was predicted that from the temperature of, temperatures of the original Big Bang, that at the present time, that radiation should appear as invisible microwaves. In fact, the temperature should be about 3 Kelvin. And this is exactly what was found out with the Cosmic Background Explorer a few years back. They scanned the whole universe and they found out quite simply that there was ripples of, of radiation all about the universe, but you can look at it in all directions and they seemed to match up with the microwave radiation which was predicted. So the Cosmic Background radiation was the big clincher that the universe definitely was, it definitely expanded from its initial beginning because of the wavelengths were stretched out to give microwaves. Now the third piece of evidence is to do with this one here. It's the amount of helium present in the universe today. The Big Bang theory tells us that the initial explosion lasted a very short time. If it didn't, then all the hydrogen would have been converted to iron in the immense heat at that moment. But the fact that it lasted just a small time would mean that it only had enough time to convert some of the helium, some of the hydrogen, into a certain amount of helium. And that's in fact what we see today. It's predicted that only 23% of all the hydrogen that was originally present at the beginning of the universe should be converted into helium. And that's what we see today.
So that's another big important evidence for the expansion of the universe, that it must have been a, an explosion which happened very, very over a very short period of time. If it happened over a longer period of time as a kind of fixed heat, then it would have converted all the hydrogen into heavier elements, and we just simply wouldn't have any stars. So the amount of helium present indicates that it was a short-lived explosion at the beginning of the universe. Now, the final piece of evidence which you can write down, but remember, you only have to select one from these, and perhaps this is the hardest one of all, and it's the famous Albert's Paradox. Now, what does this mean? It means simply, if the universe was finite, that means fixed in size and not expanding, then everywhere we would look in the night sky should be ablaze with starlight. We should see all the stars all along a line of sight, no matter where we looked, all that light adds up to give you one immense bright light. Therefore, the night sky should be as bright as the daytime sky. But that's not the case. When you look at the night sky, it is dark, spattered with all these stars. Now, once again, Ober's paradox, that was a big paradox means problem. How do you explain that? Can really only be explained by the expansion of the universe. Because those stars or objects formed at the very beginning of the universe and are so far away from us because they've expanded away from the, the, the centre explosion, then the radiation coming from them has been stretched, and it's been stretched into an invisible wavelength. And that's why we don't see those stars away in the distance. So that was Albert's paradox. So remember, you have only one out of all those ones to write down here. Yeah, I can put down Albert's paradox. Don't even describe it. Just state it. You can put down the amount of helium presence. Write that down. Cosmic background radiation. You can write that one down. And of course you can have the redshift of the spectral lines. Question 5b. A student plots some of the original data from the 1929 paper by Edwin Hubble and adds a, the line shown in order to determine a value for the Hubble constant H0. Remember, H0 is the Hubble constant. It's really the gradient of this graph. The graph has an x-axis of distance to the galaxy and the y-axis is the recessional velocity of the galaxy. That's how fast it's moving away in metres per second. And the gradient of it is the Hubble constant. So this student has drawn a line and he's calculated the gradient to be 2 times 10 to minus 17 seconds to minus 1. Now the age of the universe is given as 1 divided by h naught, which is Hubble's constant. So we can find the age of the universe in seconds very quickly. So the age of the universe, age, is going to be equal to 1 divided by Hubble's constant h naught, which is 1 divided by this number here, which the student has worked out, 2.0 times 10 to the minus 17 and it's seconds to the minus 1. So when we do that calculation, we end up with a value of 5 times 10 to the minus 16 seconds. And that is the age of the universe according to this pupil's graph. 5 times 10 to the minus 16 seconds. But the question is asking you to uh, state the age of the universe in years. So we have to convert seconds into years. And to do that, we go through our arithmetic. And we start off by saying that in a course of a year, there is 365 and one quarter days. Now, how many hours are there in a day? Well, there's 24 hours in a day, so we can find out how many hours in a year. How many minutes will that be? We multiply by 60 to give us uh, how many minutes in a full year. And then to give us the amount of seconds, we multiply by 60 again. And if we do that calculation, we end up with a staggering number of seconds in a year as 31576. Zero, zero seconds in the course of a full year. Remember, I'm taking a full year to be 365 and a quarter days to be more accurate. So if I can divide uh, 5 times 10 to minus 16 by 31557600 seconds, I can get the number of years in which the universe has been in existence. So the age 
will simply be equal to 5 times 10 to the minus 16 divided by 3, 1, 5, 5, 7, 6, o, o. And that will give me the age of the universe to be about 1.58. If I do this, my calculator times 10 to the power 9 years. So, so that's the, the calculation which the student worked out. That the age of the universe was roughly about 2 times 10 to the power 9 years old. Question 5b, part 2, capital A. The current estimate for the age of the universe is 13.8 times 10 to the power 9 years. That's 13.8 billion years. The students from a previous question uh, calculated a value of the age of the universe to be 1.58 billion years. So there's a big discrepancy in the ages of the universe. Now the first clue as to why the answers are different to the age of the universe lies in the fact that the student used data from the 1929 paper by Edwin Hubble. So the student is using data which has been improved on over the years. Uh, perhaps we have worked out uh, galaxies, we've studied galaxies much further than 40 times 10 to the power 21 metres and we've also worked out the recessional velocities a lot better as well. And all that would give a much better answer, a much more accurate answer to the age of the universe. So in stating that, you just have to write down the following sentence then. The student used old data. Much accurate values of distance and recessional velocity of galaxies are available today, and that would affect the Hubble constant. Now, the other possibility is glaringly from the student's uh, graph. Uh, as you can see from the graph, the student has plotted a line through these points lying out here, which are at the top end of the data. He has missed out these points along here, and he really simply has not done or not drawn the best fitting straight line. Now, if we draw the best fitting straight line on that graph, it should have looked something like that. Now, what you can see from that then is that the graph's gradient will be a lot smaller. And if the gradient is a lot smaller, then this number here, H0, the Hubble constant, will be smaller and consequently the age of the universe will be bigger. So that will be an improvement on the results. So another possible version uh, of why he obtained a different answer would be the student did not draw a best fitting line through the data points. And as a result of that, the smaller gradient that, that the student would have obtained would give a larger age for the universe. In fact, that's the next part of the question. It says, how could a student uh, improve on that age of the universe? And it's exactly what we did there the now. We drew a best fitting straight line, much better than what the student did. And that will give you a smaller gradient. Finally, question 5, part C. It has been discovered that the rate of expansion of the universe is increasing. State what physicists think is responsible for this increase. And the simple answer to that, just stated, it's the dark energy.